Rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to a new episode of Correct Your Citation. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa kafa wa salamun ala ibadihi al-ladhin astafa la siyama al-mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallama tasliman kathira. Praise be to Allah alone. I praise him and I seek his help. Whomsoever Allah guides is a truly guided one and whomsoever Allah leads astray no one can show him guidance. May the best peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Dear viewers everywhere, once again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Similarly, our guests here at the studio, how are you all? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum Once again, for the second time, we're hosting uh, Brother Ali from the USA, uh, Halim and Shindi. Assalamu alaikum all of you. <laughs> Insha'Allah we'll begin this segment We're resuming the tafsir and the interpretation of verse number 49 of Surah Al-Kahf This is where we stopped at It was not done completely in the last episode We ran out of time So let me recite the verse Then insha'Allah learn its English meaning and the tafsir as well A'udhu billahi min shaytan rajim وَوُضِعَ الْكِتَابُ فَتَرَى الْمُجْرِمِينَ مُشْفِقِينَ مِمَّا فِيهِ وَيَقُولُونَ يَا وَيْلَتَنَا وَيَقُولُونَ يَا وَيْلَتَنَا مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا أَحْصَاهَا وَوَجَدُوا مَا عَمِلُوا حَاضِرًا وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا In this verse, Allah the Almighty says what it means in the book. And we said the book he refers to everyone's record, whether good or bad. One's record will be placed and you will see the criminals fearful of that which is recorded therein which is basically their deeds, the harvest of what they used to do. Mm-hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not add to uh, their deeds, their bad deeds, uh, an art. It is just uh, the horrible scene of how much sins they've committed, it will scare them to death. They will say, upon, saying, uh, upon seeing that, Woe to us, Ya waylatana, Ya waylatana, Woe to us, ما لهذا الكتاب لا يغادر صغيرة ولا كبيرة إلا أحصاها. What sort of book is this that leaves neither a small thing nor a big thing, but has recorded it with numbers? And they will find all that they did placed before them, and your Lord treats no one with injustice. ولا يظلم ربك أحدا. So basically, Allah subhanahu wa taala is warning us. All of us, I warn you, and I warn myself and all Muslims, whenever we read and recite the Qur'an, whether the verses are pertaining the children of Israel, are pertaining any nation, following any prophet, that we have to consider that Allah is addressing us as well. You should not say, well, He is addressing them, not us. The issue of the book being placed on the Day of Judgment is not only their book, but every person's book, every person's record. And this warning means to prepare for this moment. In order to be delighted and happy upon receiving your record in your right hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِ فَيَقُولُ هَا أُمُقْرَأُ كِتَابِيَهُ إِنِّي ظَنَنْتُ أَنِّي مُلَاقٍ حِسَابِيَهُ فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةً رَضِيَهُ he is referring to one who will receive his record in his right hand. He will call on every person because all of us will be resurrected as we stated in the last episode in one plane. No one can hide. So he will call on every person. Halim say, He wants everyone, everyone from the very first to the very last to come forward to look in his record. That reminds us with whenever we were in high school and we are waiting for report cards, for the results. When one is, uh, uh, have scored big scores, he's very proud of himself and he shows it to every person, right? 
Mm-hmm. But when one fails, he's trying to hide and conceal. He turns his cell phone off. He doesn't speak to anyone. Why? He's shying off. That if he, if he's a person who really uh, is ashamed of his failure, on the day of judgment, there is a bigger scale. The successful ones will call on every person to come and look in their record. He says that, this is what I believe. I believe that there will be a day of judgment. There will be a day of assessment and accountability. And that's why I have prepared for it. Accordingly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will compense him with what's good, with what's better. فهو في عيشة الرضية في جنة عالية the eternal happiness and delight in paradise and so forth. Pertaining the one who receives his record in his left hand, the wrongdoers, the disbelievers, the rebellious ones, فيقول يا ليتني لم أوت كتابي. I wish that I did not receive my book. I did not see. I wish I was not even resurrected. ولم أدر ما حسابي. I wish. I did not know anything about this moment, about accountability. Ya laytaha kanat al qadiya. I wish death was the last everything. station, and there will not be any resurrection afterward. But this is not the case. One of the articles of faith is to believe in the day of recompense, which will require you to believe in what Halim. In accountability. accountability. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, في سورة آل عمران يوم تجد كل نفس ما عملت من خير محضرا وما عملت من سوء تود لو أن بينها وبينه أمدا بعيدا in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a close look at that on the day of judgment, when the books will be presented before every person, then, كل نفس, every person will find whatever they've done of good or bad presented in the record. But as far as what was done wrong, evil doing, major sins, then, that person will say and would wish that there is a great distance between him and his record. Mm. He's trying to escape his record. He doesn't want to take it. يَوَدُّ لَوْ أَنَّ بَيْنَهُ وَمَا عَمِلَتْ مِنْ سُوءٍ تَوَدُّ لَوْ أَنَّ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَهُ أَمَدًا بَعِيدًا وَيُحَذِّرُكُمُ اللَّهُ نَفْسَهُ In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sealed this verse with a remark. He says, وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا that your Lord does not wrong no one, does not treat no one with injustice. Rather, this is your record, contains your deeds, whether good or bad. With regards to the good, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَظْلِمُ مِثْقَالَ Indeed, Allah does not wrong any person, even an atom weight of injustice. No way. وَإِن تَكُوا حَسَنَةً يُضَاعِفْهَا He does not treat us with just justice, rather He treats us with mercy and generosity. So with regards to the good deeds, إِن تَكُوا حَسَنَةً If there is a single good deed, Allah will multiply the reward for it. يُضَاعِفْهَا وَيُؤْتِ مِنْ لَدُنْهُ أَجَرًا عَظِيمًا And He gives out of His bounty a great reward without limit. For instance, if we uh, examine one parable that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala drew forth في سورة البقرة concerning giving in a charity. He said, مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ حَبَّةٍ أَنْبَتَتْ سَبْعَ سَنَاءٍ فِي كُلِّ سُنْبُلَةٍ مِئَةُ حَبَّةٍ وَاللَّهُ يُضَاعِفُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءٍ Can you imagine one single seed producing 700 grains? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that one single hasana, one charity, a dollar, a dinar, a dirham that you give, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will keep doubling and multiplying the reward for it up to 700 times. And there is even more since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَاللَّهُ يُضَاعِفُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ 
way beyond the 700 times to whomever he wills. So, when it comes to good deeds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives manifold reward yeah. without yeah. limit. Yeah. But when it comes to sins, then he treats you with justice. He said, Azza wa Jalla, by the end of Surah Al-An'am, مَنْ جَاءَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ فَلَهُ عَشْرُ أَمْثَالِهَا وَمَنْ جَاءَ بِالسَّيِّئَةِ فَلَا يُجْزَى إِلَّا مِثْلَهَا إِلَّا مِثْلَهَا Whoever does a single good deed, he shall receive ten times therein. The like of what he's done will be deposited to his credit. Thereof. And one who does a single bad deed, his recompense for this sin will be only one recompense. Yeah. One say, yeah. It will not be recorded against him two or three or four. Justice is one of the traits of the most just, our Lord, Allah the Almighty. In the hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has said, on the day of judgment, we understand that those who will be held accountable are humans and the jinn. Because they are responsible to answer the prophets. <coughs> Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willingly. Different than animals, different than plants, fruits and vegetations, different than mountains, heavens and the earth, different than the angels. Who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unwillingly. That's why there is no such uh, accountability for them on the day of judgment. Yeah. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said in one hadith that يُقْتَصُّ لِلشَّاتِ الْعَجْمَاءِ مِنَ الْقَرْنَاءِ من الق... uh, للعجماء من القرماء. What does it mean? On the day of judgment, a sheep or a ram that had horns in the life of this world and have used these horns to hurt another innocent sheep, on the day of judgment, both of them will be resurrected. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give the sheep which she did not have horns, a couple of horns, in order to take its right from the transgressor sheep or ram. That's why many of the companions, including Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, used to wish that I wish I wish that I was just a sheep. Because on the day of judgment, sheep and animals will not suffer the fear of might entering the fire of hell. Rather, there will be equality in punishment, then they will turn into dust. And this is it for them. But for us as humans and for the jinn as well, there is either one of two places, an eternal delight in heaven or an eternal suffering in the fire of hell. May Allah Sheikh, subhanahu wa uh, ta'ala take all of us to his this, paradise by his mercy. Yes, Muhammad. Sheikh, uh, this uh, shape hadith, does it uh, refer to every, every, everything is going to be uh, uh, determined and uh, just like exam, example or... Uh, it, it Whenever the Prophet وسلم, said that, it does not refer to a single sheep or a single cow or a single animal, but it's covering the system of justice mm -hmm. that every oppressor, including animals, on the Day of Judgment will be treated likewise. Mm -hmm. So this is as far as the animals. But for the humans, there is a different scale. And that's why Nabi sallallahu mm -hmm. advised us that if there is a mazlama, if you have wronged anyone in this life, then ask him to forgive you. Render back his money to him or his amana, or apologize to him before a day will come on the day there will not be neither dirham nor a dinar. There is no settlement for money. The settlement will be from your own good deeds. So imagine a person like Hitler on the day of judgment coming uh, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while he had killed hundreds of thousands of people. Imagine George Bush coming on the Day of Judgment after invading a sovereign country and being the sole cause of the death and the dislocation of hundreds of thousands of families. What are you going to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Such person should really regret and repent unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before everybody and beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness before the day will come when there will be justice, the ultimate justice. وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا The following verse is tapping another new story. We already studied the story of the people of the cave, the youth, Halim. Yeah. 
Then we studied another story, which is the story of the two men. The two men, the one who was rich and the other was poor. And the rich was a disbeliever, uh, while the poor was a believer. And we learned the fate of each one of them. Then, uh, in this story, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us with the eternal enmity between us and yeah. our plain and open opponent, which is Satan. Satan. Yeah. He says, as the Jinn, وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَفَسَقَ عَنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّهِ أَفَتَتَّخِذُونَهُ وَذُرِّيَّتَهُ أَوْلِيَاءَ مِنْ وهم لكم عدو بئس للظالمين بدلا In this verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us with the original story of the enmity and animosity between us and Satan Halim When did it begin and how did it start وإذ قلنا للملائكة Allah the Almighty is using the pronoun of uh, the uh, single who is glorifying himself, yeah. we. Remember when we said to the royal we. Remember when we said to the angels. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was addressing al-malaika. وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ تِسْجُدُوا لِآدَمِ The word sujood could mean prostration or bound down. The sujood should be only to Allah, Allah the Almighty. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if I was commanding any person to bow down or to prostrate himself or herself before another, other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I would have commanded the wife to bow down out of respect to her husband. Not out of worship. So bowing down or prostrating oneself out of worship is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and before the Lord. Bowing down before any other creature is considered an act of shirk. But in this case, it is Allah Himself who ordered the angels to bow down to Adam, whom He created by His own hand, in order to greet Him, not to worship, in order to magnify Him, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created every living creature by saying, Kun, and it was. But with regard to Adam, السلام, He formed Him out of mud by his own hand. Then he breathed the soul into him by himself. And this is how he honored Adam السلام, and his offspring. وَلَقَدِ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in the Quran. Well, فَسَجَدُوا They all bow down before Adam السلام, in order to greet him and in order to worship Allah by obeying him in his command, except for one. This word except is a little bit problematic. Why? Yeah. Because when I say that uh, all the guests have arrived except a camel. Well, I did not invite a camel. <laughs> but when you say all the angels were commanded to bow down to Adam, they did except Satan. It might give you the impression that Satan, Satan was, was uh, one of the uh, angels, uh, which is false. That's why right away in the same verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Illa Iblis, except for Iblis, since he, he belonged to al jinn And what about al jinn Are they different creation? Yes. Illa Iblis kana min al jinn In the hadith, which is a hadith, collected by a Muslim and narrated by Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, خُلِقَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةُ مِنْ نور. The angels were created from light. light. وَخُلِقَ إِبْلِيسُ مِنْ مَارِجٍ مِنْ نار. And Satan was created from a smokeless flame. وَخُلِقَ آدَمْ مِمَّا تَعْلَمُونَ And Adam was created from whatever you already know. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeatedly stated in the Quran that he created Adam from? Mud. Mud. Clean. Clay. Dust, water, because basically if you mix the, the dust with water, it will produce mud. mud. And clay. mud. Yeah. Then if this mud is been hardened, it becomes the clay. Clay. Uh, like poetry. 
it becomes hard. So all of these descriptions are perfectly fine. This is our origin. Then, of course, we're created for ma in Mahin, which is uh, the semen and the zygote, etc. But Iblis was created from fire. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making it very clear that Iblis, Satan, was not one of the jinn. He happened to be present. So when they were commanded, and he was left, and he, they obeyed, they bowed down, except for him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeated the command, and he said, مَا مَنَعَكَ أَلَّا تَكُونَ مَعَ استجدين? Why didn't you join them? Maybe he misunderstood. Maybe he thought the command was only to the angels. So now he declared his evil intention, his arrogance. The worst sin ever is arrogance. And this is what took Satan out of paradise into the fire of hell eternally. Because he was arrogant. He compared himself to Adam. And he said, خَلَقَتَنِي مِن نَارٍ وَخَلَقَتَهُ مِن طِينٍ how can I bow down to him while I'm superior to him? He created me from fire and he created him from mud. And fire is superior to mud. So the worst sin is arrogance and jealousy. He envied Adam a.s. That's why the Prophet wasallam said in one hadith, one who has, as Laura asked, an atom weight of arrogance in his heart shall not enter Paradise. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us humble ourselves before Him and before the believers. Well, this is it for this segment. And inshallah, in a little bit, we'll return back with a new rule of the rules of Al-Mad. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be back inshallah shortly. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Side it every day and do read it loud. Narrated Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, a man came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and asked, O Allah's Apostle, which charity is the most superior in reward? He replied, The charity which you practice while you are healthy, niggardly and afraid of poverty and wish to become wealthy. Do not delay it to the time of approach and death, and then say, Give so much to such and such, and so much to such and such and it has already belonged to such and such, as it is too late. Related by Al-Bukhari. Recite it every day and do read it loud. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Uh, in the previous episode we tackled Maddul Badal, right? which is in English, al-badal means exchange. exchange. And we call it exchange because we exchange a second hamza, al-hamza sakina, into a mad letter that suits the vowel of the previous hamza. Mad al-badal is a very exceptional mad because we're talking about the mad letters preceded by hamza versus al-mad al-jaiz al-munfasil, al-mad al-wajib al-muttasil, or Mad al al kubra So in this case, the Hamza comes before <coughs> the, the, the Mad letters, <laughs> not after. Okay. And we said there are four cases for this Mad. We studied two in the last episode, and inshallah we'll continue. But before we take the second two, I would like to have a quick recap and study the other two as well once again. The first state or case of Mad al-Badal is observed when continuing or stopping, regardless, you remember the example of Surah Al-Asr, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالصَّبْرِ So if you begin with the word آمَنُوا, still you apply مَدُّ الْبَدَلْ, حَرَكَتَيْن. If you connect it, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا, you still apply مَدُّ الْبَدَلْ. The second is observed only when continuing the recitation. But when you stop, then Mad al-Badal will be suspended. This Mad, which is two harakas, will be suspended. Such as the word, وَإِلَيْهِ مَآبِ 
if you stop that develops a new rule which is known as al madd al arid sukun so if you choose to do 2 4 or 6 then that overcomes the nature of madd al badal al madd al arid sukun will be studied inshallah in the future in details this verse wa ilayhi ma'ab ilayhi ad'u wa ilayhi ma'ab is verse number 36 of surah uh, al rad now the next case is that which is observed when stopping only. You see the previous one, which is when you continue the recitation only, not when you stop. But this one is the opposite. When you stop only, because if you connect this word, which has madul badal, to the following word, it might develop a new hukm, especially if this word begins with hamza. Yeah. Such as, we have this example of Surah Yusuf, which says, وَجَاءُوا Where is Maddul Badal here? Maddul Badal is on the wow. Yeah. Because the Madd letter which is the wow is preceded by Hamza. 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 So when you stop, then you prolong or you lengthen the wow to harakas because of Maddul Badal. Mm-hmm. Okay? But what about that lengthening in the beginning when you said وَجَاءُ That is مَدْ وَاجِبْ وَاجِبْ مُتَّصِلْ Because the مَدْ letter is followed by a hamza within the same word. Okay. So when I stop, there will be مَدْ الْبَدَلْ I say وَجَاءُ And that's it. Mm-hmm. But guess what? If I continue the recitation and I connect it to the following word, the following word begins with hamz. hamza. And there is a mad letter, so that will develop a new hook, which is mad munfasr. And it is permissible to shorten it to two harakas, or tawassut to four harakas, or more than that, that is called ishba'. But now, in this case, if you choose to do it for, as we agreed, we said that al-madd al is a munfasr in our classes, we will lengthen it for four counts. So, now I've got al madd al munfasil the separate mad, and I've got al madd madd al badal. Which one will overtake and overcome? Madd al munfasil. Al madd al munfasil. So if I normally prolong al madd al munfasil for harakas, I will completely neglect madd al badal. Then I will say, وَجَاءُ أَبَاهُمْ of Surah Yusuf, of course. That was the third case of Mad exchange. Maddul Badal. When it is observed when it's stopping only. Mm-hmm. Okay. The fourth case is very amazing. That which is observed only when beginning with the word. Normally we don't begin with any of these words. There is almost seven uh, words in the entire Quran which fill in several surahs, not just seven positions. These are six of them. If we begin, if we begin with any of these words, there will be a different treatment. It will be even pronounced differently. Normally we don't begin with these words. Let's take for example the first word. The first word which is tumina. We do not read it this way. This is of verse number 283 of Surah Al-Baqarah. The ayah which is known as the longest ayah in the entire Quran. Yeah. Which is called what Halim? Ayat al The yeah. ayah which is pertaining debt and dealing with loans. <coughs> in this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِنْ أَمِنَ بَعْضُكُمْ بَعْضًا فَلْيُؤَدِّ الَّذِي اُؤْتُمِنَ أَمَانَتَهُ Basically, this first alif, this first hamza is hamza wasl. What does it mean? Hamza wasl or connecting hamza. When we connect this word to the previous one, we drop this hamza. We do not read it. But if you begin the word with it, then you must state it in saying, not in writing. So you say, O, O. Mm-hmm. Okay? And by the way, there is a very important trick. Uh, you may hear it from me for the first time, which is, what will determine the vowel on this Hamza? The vowel on this Alif. It doesn't have any vowel. It has a sign or a symbol that looks like the head of the Sa'ad. Mm-hmm. 
Similarly, in the entire Quran, Hamzatul Wasl, it will not have the Hamza written as Hamza. Rather, the symbol on top, like the head of the Sad. Yeah. So how do I know that whether it's Fatha, Dhamma, or Kasra? How do I begin with it? What will determine that is the third letter of the word. Yeah. Look at the third letter of the word. That's Ta. I don't mean the letter. I mean the vowel that on is the with the third letter of the word. So in this word, the third letter has Dhamma. So that means Hamzatul Wasl, if I begin with it, I will pronounce the Hamza with Dhamma. Dhamma. Say it out loud. I want to make sure that you got it. Huh? I will pronounce the Hamza with yeah, Dhamma. Dhamma. So this Hamza will not be Hamzat Wasl anymore. Rather, it will be Hamzat Qata'a. I pronounce it clearly, even though I do not write it. And what kind of vowel will it take? The vowel of the third, the third letter. letter of the word. So in this case, it will be Dhamma. And in order to apply Maddul Badal, I've got the first Hamza. It will be stated in saying. And there is another Hamza, but the second Hamza is non vowel It has a sukun. And that's why the reciters have agreed that in this case, I'm going to exchange this Hamza into a mad letter of the same type of the vowel of the first Hamza. What is this complication? Tell me, how will I get to read it if I begin this word with the Hamza? I will not connect it to the previous word. In this case, Halim, I gotta say, Utumina. Utumina. You don't pronounce the Hamza. Exactly, because I exchanged it into what? Into a mad letter, which is wow. That suits the Dhamma of the first Hamza. Because the second Hamza was a Sakina. Okay, next example. Sheikh Utumina in Hafs. Yes, why? Because if you begin with it, normally we never begin with this word. Mm-hmm. But we say, فَلْيُؤَدِّ الَّذِي تُمِنَ أَمَانَةَ Okay, the next example as well. Tena. I've got two Hamzas. The first one is Hamzat Wasl. I don't read it in case of connecting the word to the previous one. Continuing the recitation. Mm-hmm. But when I start with it, when I begin with it, then I state it in saying, not in writing. So I have to pronounce it. So yeah. I have to change the second Hamza into Kastr. a mad letter that suits the vowel of the first Hamza, which is in this case, Kastr. Kastr. In Surah Al-An'am, verse number 71, يَدْعُونَهُ إِلَى الْهُدَى تِنَا I did not pronounce the first Hamza. Rather, I did pronounce the second one. But when I begin with the word, إِتِنَا Then I will exchange the second Hamza into a middle letter. And I will say, إِتِنَا Excellent. And I will say what? إِتِنَا With a mad that measures two counts. إِتِنَا Similarly, the next word, it will be, إِذَلِّي uh, إِذَلِّي Changing the second Hamza into a mad letter that suits the Kasra, that will be a ya. I will say, إِذَلِّي But we do not in our regular recitation begin with this word. Rather we say, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ ذَلِّي وَلَا تَفْتِنِّي Surah At-Tawbah, verse number 49. Yes, yeah, but the vowel here, here it's not Kasra, it's Fatha. Which, which one? Excellent, not excellent observation. Mm-hmm. If the vowel of the third letter is fatha, still you give hamza al wasl if you want to pronounce it a kasa. Mm-hmm. This is a very excellent observation. Thank you so much. Okay, the next example of Surah Yunus, verse number fifteen. قال الذين لا يرجون لقاء بِقُرْآنٍ غَيْرِ هَذَا أَوْ بَدِّلْهِ The word إِئْتِ If I begin with it, I will say إِئْتِ بِقُرْآنٍ غَيْرِ هَذَا Which is not common, is not even known that much. But it will be mad badal if I begin with any of these words. Now we can apply on the next uh, couple of words. There are some cases that resemble the exchange mad. Mm-hmm. Even they don't need the same criterion of Maddul Badal. Such as, when the original Maddul letter 
if the original mad letter, which is not an alternative of the hamza, whether the hamza follows a non-vowel connected uh, sound letter or not. What does it mean? The word Qur'an, Qur'an, we've got a mad letter, which is Al-alif. the alif, preceded by hamza. Hamz. And the hamza is preceded by a second letter, which is ra. Mm-hmm. Whether the letter is sakin or mutaharrik, vowel or non-vowel. But the mad letter is an original letter. It's not exchanged from a hamza. Mm-hmm. It is an original mad letter. The word Quran spells as follows. Under any circumstances, qaf, ra, hamza, then alif. And this alif is a mad letter, original mad letter. Similarly, the next, of, uh, the next words, mas'ula or azzam'an. And in the next line, we see the word qanut. The word layaus. The hamza is preceded by a vowed letter. letter. This is what we meant above when we say whether the hamza is preceded by a sakin or, or vowed. a vowed letter. So in this case, even though the mad letter is an original mad letter, is not an alternative of hamza, still will be similar, will be treated similar to Maddul Badal. Okay, we just studied these two examples when we said the Mad letter follows a connecting Hamza or Hamza to Wasl. Mm-hmm. So if, we, if I begin with it only, I will say either Li or Eat. Right? Okay. There is another case that resembles the exchange Mad or Maddul Badal. One word, that word Many people, whether Arab or non-Arab, confuse this word with another word. Look at this word, uh, Ali. How long have you been a Muslim? I mean, you're, you're Native American, right? Yes, yeah. Can you, uh, after I finish this, give us an advice and give the reverts, and give also those who were born Muslims an advice as uh, how important it is to learn how to read the Quran and how easy it is since you revert yourself. And mashallah, even though your mother tongue was not Arabic, Alhamdulillah, shukla, now you read the Quran properly and you're learning sophisticated rules of tajweed. So once I finish with this, inshallah, uh, I'll let you speak to us. The word, Ata, Wa'ata al-mala ala hubbihi dhawil qurba in, in Surah Al-Baqarah. The word ata, which means give. This word will be treated similar to madd al-badal, harakatayn. Ata, there is madd letter preceded by hamza. Can you tell me, Halim, linguistically, what is the difference between the word ata and ata? Uh, the alif. So it was spelling, it's the Let's alif. begin with the ata, meaning. Ata the word ata means what? He brought it. Someone. Ata means gave. Oh. It is in the past tense. What about ata? Means come. He, he, he came with it. Came, that's in the past tense as oh. well. Ata amrullahi fala tasta'jilu. In the beginning of Surah al nahl Allah says ata, ata. So how do you know this word is ata and this word is ata? As he said that they both begin with alif. In the word ata, I give maddul badal. Harakatay, in order to distinguish this word from the word ata, because this word, the alif, is preceded by hamza. And the hamza will be written on the line before the alif. In the case of the word ata, which means came, came. the hamza will be on top, on top of, the alif. of the alif. Last, last case that's, that's similar to maddul badal, the substitute mad. If you remember, we spoke about maddul awad, especially when the word ends with tanween, then we stop at it. The word, for instance, sawa. Am I stopping right? Nope. Mm. I said there is, there should be madd awad. Instead of a tanween, I will give natural madd harakatain. Yeah. So I will say, sawa. Right? Yeah. Instead of a tanween. So in this case, when you stop like that, there is mad, mad du'awat. Uh, and it is preceded by hamza. Mm-hmm. So that is similar also to 
مد البدل خطا سيميلر تو مد البدل برادر علي افتر ان شاء الله ذا شورت بريك اي وونت يو تو جيف اس ان ادفايس اند ذا فيورز از ويل وذ ريجاردز تو ذا امبورتنس اوف ليرنينج هاو تو ريد ذا قران ايفن ذو يو ار نوت بورن ان ارابيك سبيكر يو ار نيتيف امريكان Brothers and sisters, a short break, then inshallah, uh, we'll return back in a little bit. Please stay tuned. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Recite it every day and do read it loud. Welcome to this new episode of Focus Point. The new generation is has the got the habit of reading more than before. Jewish question was named basically the problem of Jews who lost their function in society. Recited every day and do read it loud. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Uh, we promised you before the break that Brother Ali has something to share with us, so uh, we're listening attentively. Please proceed on. Uh, learning the Quran in the language that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed it in is very, very important for all Muslims all throughout the world. It's uh, a gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to mankind and the Arab speaking people have gotten a blessing that uh, some of them take for granted. But we as Muslims from all over the world, we need to learn this because this will be the difference between the guidance, our guidance and our misguidance. If someone else translates it to you, then you misunderstand it or understand it according to how they understood or misunderstood the Quran. So it's very important. It's the language of the paradise. It's the language of the Prophet Muhammad It's the language, you know, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen to reveal his message in. So we all need to strive hard to learn this language, and it can be done. You know, it, you have to take it step by step, and you have to make effort. But it definitely can be done. I remember when I first, you know, was trying to learn, it was extremely difficult. Uh, but alhamdulillah, you know, I made great effort, you know, and alhamdulillah, we're still learning and I'm still learning. But remember this, that the Qur'an is the huda lil muttaqin, it's guidance for those who have taqwa. And the only way we can get the blessings and the guidance is by learning to read the Qur'an, to understand what Allah has said in the language that He has said it. And may Allah reward and assist us all in that effort. Jazakumullah khan. So basically, it is not impossible no. for a non-Arabic speaker to learn how to read the Qur'an and also understand what he reads or what she reads. No, it's not mm-hmm. impossible. It's, it's very important that we do. Uh, May Allah make it easy for all of those who are sincere in the effort uh, of learning the Qur'an to grasp on the knowledge of the Qur'an and the Sunnah as well. Mm-hmm. Okay, now we're ready to practice and uh, I think we, uh, we stopped last time at verse number 62. So we'll begin with verse number 63 yeah. of Surah Al-Kahf. That is page number 301, uh, the Qur'an, the print of uh, Al-Madina, Al-Munawwara. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Qala ara'ayta idh awayna ila al-sakhrati fa'inni nasitu al-huta wa ma ansanihu illa al-shaytan an azkura. Qala ara'ayta idh awayna ila al-sakhrati fa'inni نسيت الحوت وما أنسانيه إلا الشيطان أن أذكره واتخذ سبيله في البحر عجبا واتخذ سبيله في البحر عجبا قال ذلك ما كنا نبغ 
قال ذلك ما كنا نبغ فارتدى على آثارهما قصصا فارتدى على آثارهما قصصا فوجدا عبدا من عبادنا آتيناه رحمة من عندنا فوجد عبدا من عبادنا آتيناه رحمة من عندنا آتيناه رحمة من عندنا وعلمناه من لدنا علما آتيناه رحمة من عندنا وعلمناه من لدنا علما Before we go any further, let's study the ahkam and the rules which we meet in these three verses. In the first verse, قال أرأيت إذ أوينا إلى الصخرة This is مد جائز منفصل مد جائز منفصل منفصل because the mad letter in a word fell in one word and the hams next word in a separate word which is the next word so why do we call it جائز because it is permissible to shorten it to two harakas or two prolong it to four five well then once again there is another مد جائز منفصل where is it? ما ما أنسيني وما أنسانيه right mm-hmm. okay if you notice here the word وما أنسانيه إلا الشيطان أن أذكره look at the ها by the end of the word أنسانيه مد الصلاة does it fit the criterion of مد الصلاة is this ha, the ha of the pronoun? Yes, it is. Yeah, yes. It right? Is. Yeah, but it doesn't fit because the... Because of what? The the letter before uh, al- exactly. al-ha is non The conditions for maddu sila that the ha of the pronoun should be preceded and followed by vowel letters. letters. But in this case, it's preceded by a non-vowel letter. That's why there is no maddu sila, neither sura nor kubra here. But if you go to the word أَذْكُرَهُ وَاتَّخَذَ There is definitely مَدُّ الصِّلَةِ This ha of the pronoun, I remember it. It belongs to the third person. And the previous letter and the following letter are vowel. vowel. Okay. وَاتَّخَذَ سَبِيلَهُ فِي الْبَحْرِ عَجَبًا Once again. سَبِيلَهُ Huh? The word Sabilahu, the ha is the ha of the pronoun preceded and followed by vowel letters. So this is mad salah but what kind? The lesser so connecting mad. Jayidi al Barakallah fiku. Okay. The next ayah. Qala dalika ma kunna nabag. There is a qalqala on the back. I prefer to connect it. So in this case, once I stop on any verse, I, I, uh, I put the sukun. That's why I exchange the kasra of the word of the letter ghain into a sukun. I say nabagh. Now I will say qala dhalika ma kunna nabaghi fartadda fartadda ala asarihi ma qasasa Again, مد جائز منفصل which we agree to make it for her. Four. Four. Okay. In verse number 65. فَوَجَدَ عَبَدًا مِّنْ عِبَادِنَا It's very obvious that we have إِدْغَام with غُنَّ We put a lot of emphasis on the غُنَّ It should be two counts. مِّنْ عِبَادِنَا There is إِظْهَار حَقِيقِي من عبادنا آتيناه رحمة من عندنا 
من عبادنا آتيناه درز مد جائز منفصل مد جائز منفصل رحمة من عندنا وفقت إضغام وذغنا دن إظهار من دن عندنا Can you remember عندنا Where is the ruling there? عندنا <تصفيق> The dal is not one of the letters which cause إضغام if they follow a noon in sakina That is إخفاء حقيقي عندنا وذغنا Exactly Okay So that is إخفاء حقيقي وعلمناه من لدنا علم من لدنا What do we have there? إضغام إضغام without غنى It is never sufficient just to say إضغام You have to be specific with غنى or without غنى Here it is إضغام without غنى By the end of this episode I ask Allah the Almighty to help us to understand what we've just learned and to benefit in our daily life with this knowledge and transmit it to others أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم This is all the time we got for you this episode and hope to meet you inshallah next time safely I'll leave you in peace والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Brothers and sisters to increase your iman Read the miracle recite the Quran Recite it every day and do read it loud The verses of Quran are all Muslims pride This miracle was revealed Over a long time span Sent from Allah To an angel Then to a man That man was Muhammad The best of creation We were chosen To be part of his nation He gave us a message And that was Islam so read this miracle, recite the Quran. Huh?